Getting straight to it, this Chinese made Eversolo DMP A6 is a Wi-Fi or Ethernet Android operable touchscreen type streamer that you can use to play music from your NAS over UPnP. You can use the streaming services internally from it as well or connect USB pen drives or drives. And in the truest sense of using it as a traditional streamer, you can use its internal DAC and analog outputs to your amplifier, or alternatively, use it as a transport with a digital out into your DAC. At launch, I've been told the price is 860 euros, 760 pounds, or 930 dollars. So the first thing you notice when you pick this unit up is how well made it is at this money. Slabbed aluminium flat panels on each side and a lovely LCD six inch touchscreen display, which is of a quality of an iPad retina screen with the colors and the preciseness of all the edges of the icons in the display. Also, you've got VU meters with this display, which is a nice touch and you can swipe between different ones and you can set volume to fixed or variable so that you can use the front volume dial in case, for instance, you were going to be using it as a preamp. Connection wise, this streamer uses balanced XLR outputs and they're true balanced connections, RCA single ended outputs. And on the digital output side, you have coax, optical and USB. And digital input wise, you've got coax, optical and a USB-C connection, which is really useful nowadays for connecting plethora of USB-C devices. So this unit can stream Spotify Connect, Tidal Connect, it's AirPlay 2 capable, and also it can deal with Rune, it's a Rune ready device. Also UPnP streaming via an NAS, as I mentioned. And if you stream via any of these means, you do so by the inbuilt playback screen. If you load up TuneIn for Radio, Quo Bars, Amazon Music, Apple Music, you do so via the Android interface of this unit in connection with those apps. But as far as I understand it, they all play back in their normal native resolutions. You don't just have to use this unit's touchscreen, and this is a really nice, neat feature, by the way. In the Eversolo app, you can cast the screen onto your tablet or phone. It's, by the way, iOS and Android capable. And this isn't just showing what's on the screen, but you can also select options on your iPad as well. Very, very neat, considering also that you don't have a remote, which to be honest, I didn't find, or I never really find as a disadvantage because let's face it, most stuff is controlled via apps and tablets and phones nowadays. This streamer supports PCM sample rates up to 768 kilohertz, 32 bit, DSD 512 as well. And it's got a whoppingly fast processor, an ARM Cortex A55, that has no issue whatsoever dealing with big libraries, all the streaming integration with this unit. And so far as DACs are concerned, it uses two ESS 9038 Q2M DAC chips. They're in dual mono configuration, which means to the uninitiated that you get one per channel. And this contrasts the new Blue Sound Node X's single 9028 Q2M DAC chip. So I suppose at least on the numbering nomenclature, it's the better DAC chip. So some other noteworthy features to mention, this is a streamer that can handle MQA, obviously via Tidal interface in the unit, but also via its free digital inputs. It can also deal with gapless playback, and they say in the manual only with WAV and FLAC files, but I certainly got gapless playback when I tried Tidal, Spotify, Amazon, and playing back via UPnP. It's also Bluetooth capable, which you change with the input on the display or via the app. 
And I like the way too that you can change the DAT filters in it. In the manual, it describes exactly what each of them do. Mostly a nuance change, which is my experience, pretty common. The underside SSD slot converts it to make it a server and you can add in an M.2 SSD drive, which I know from my experience of buying a new PC relatively recently is one of the fastest SSD drives that you can get. I think you can go up to two terabytes and you can transfer files to it over the network with your Mac or PC or via the A6's internal file manager app. It's really useful when you go into the app to transfer over the network using PCs because the app shows you the IP address, which you just type into your internet browser, and obviously also passwords and logins, which sometimes can get really annoying in Windows when you don't know what they are. You can actually rip from a CD drive directly to the SSD drive with this unit. And I tried my old LG drive, which I found out wasn't compatible. It's been a while since I used it, so I wasn't sure. But a quick look on Amazon and you can see that you can get really, really cheap CD ripping drives. You don't need anything particularly fancy and experience tells us that you don't need an expensive one to rip the music exactly as it is on the CD. The standalone character of this streamer when you use the analog outputs is of a neutral and resolving performance with a really nice, deep and impactful bass. And Eversolo make mention in their blurb of the use of hand-picked components from brands like Nishikon and things like low ripple power supplies, also the low noise solid state ideal. This may all add to why this is so. But when I compared this streamer to my Chord Cutist in my system, the Eversolo has a wider, thicker, more tonally dispersive and wide sound to the Cutest. Not in the sense of the top treble because they're both pretty good in that department. The Cutest though does separate sounds out in space and decay slightly better. But whether you prefer one or the other, in my system, it was ridiculously difficult to separate these out. This Eversolo is perhaps working well into the Hegel because of the balanced infrastructure and the balanced connections. I would say though that it probably just goes to the cutest in the sense of that depth that it has and the spaciness in the recording, but it's cigarette paper thin so far as the difference is concerned. What I think though is way more surprising is that this streamer is much the improver on the Cambridge Audio CXN version 2 about the same price, this is 800 quid this Cambridge in the UK, 40 quid more. It's just in terms of this DMP A6 having lovely soundstage and staging and that impactful low bass that I talked about. The Cambridge Audio in comparison has a hazy, slightly brittle treble and also it sounds more compressed. And I know I said in my CXM version 2 video that the Cambridge was quite close to the Cutis. In fairness, that was probably due to you know, experience at the time, not kind of livable experience. But I've had this ever solo for about a month and I've got the measure of it. And it's clearly the improver on the Cambridge Audio CXM version 2. It's quite profound, really, what is actually capable at this type of money. So I think that when you factor in this better sound quality, the all aluminium case, because the Cambridge has a front aluminium panel and then a ply metal wraparound case, better in terms of the fact that it's a server and you can add a hard drive to it. Also, the fact that it's got a better display than the Cambridge. The Cambridge's display is slightly grainy. This is a full resolution type. And just the general nature of the fact that they're both similar in terms of streaming capability. They're both room ready, for example. This Ever Solo is clearly the Cambridge Audio's killer. And okay, it may not have Chromecasting ability in it, but let's face it, out of everyone that streams and streams their streaming services, how many people actually Chromecast nowadays anyway? I doubt it's very much, and I suspect it's a very small proportion of the overall use of streaming via Tidal Connect, Spotify Connect, and integration of streaming in streamers themselves. 
So this all goes to show, I think, that you can have your cake and eat it, and you can get a streamer that beats the competition mm -hmm. and works as well as something like a Cord Cutis or next to Dammit as well as a Cord Cutis in a system, particularly like mine, that is with my amplifier and speakers around eight and a half thousand pounds, which frankly is just astounding and astonishing. And I can't wax lyrical enough about that. I think that this is particularly the case with some Chinese products in my experience. So I watched the review that Steve Huff did on his YouTube channel where he compared this streamer to the Lumin U2 Mini. And he said that this streamer is actually the better product, the better sounding product, which is amazing considering it's half the money. And that kind of chimes with my own experiences of trying really expensive streaming transports. And so that's why I wouldn't try them really. Also, I know another reviewer who gave the Lumin U2 Mini back because he said it didn't compete as well as a streamer that he had around 500 pounds. I'm gonna comment more on sound quality in a minute, but here first is our music recommendation. I thought I'd do a test comparing playing back a file off the Eversolo's SSD drive to the same file off my Inuos Zenith Mark II as a Rune server playing into the Eversolo as a Rune Ready endpoint. And I actually found in the Eversolo's favour in the sense of a slightly less smoothed and coloured sound with more visceral detail and channel separation, which was kind of amazing considering that I'm actually playing off a 40 quid cheapo Amazon SSD drive. I also found more space in that comparison and when I did similar comparison playing a Tidal track to the same track on the SSD drive, the difference is much more profound and obvious which is perhaps not surprising, just a more compressed sound with Tidal. You might actually think, given the extra money to the 2021 Blue Sound node, that this ever solo would be better in every respect in terms of areas like dynamics, sound staging, bass performance, resolution, and so on. And you'd be right. Streaming with my Hegel H390 as a room ready endpoint versus using the ever solo as a room ready endpoint and then going into the analog inputs of the Hegel over XLR, the Hegel setup, relatively speaking, seemed a little withdrawn in its overall approach to detail. With the ever solo Hegel combo, it seemed to pop out in terms of detail with the recordings. I don't really think that I could say sound quality was massively discernibly different between taking digital out from the ever solo into the cutest and then going into my amp versus just going straight analog output from the ever solo into the Hegel. Using this streamer just as a transport, and I wasn't expecting to say this one iota, I should say, it's quite a bit cleaner and less compressed sounding, relatively speaking, to the Blue Sound Node 2021. Also, much more depth to recordings. And I try to keep it to simple terms because if you start using descriptives and very pretentious language, I don't think people know what you mean. So this test with the Node led me on to wondering, how does this streamer sound as a transport into the cutis versus my Inuos Zenith over USB directly into the cutis. And I've got to say, relatively speaking, and it was a smaller change to the comparison I did before, the Ever Solo sounds slightly cleaner and stages better than the Inuos does. On the downside, there is no HDMI eARC input or headphone socket with this streamer. And I know some people like to, or they do, exclude products on the basis that they don't 
have a particular feature that they need. In this particular case, given how well specced and how well sounding, how well built this product is for the price, you really, really do that at your own detriment. And especially if you don't think of a workaround or potential workaround that could work. As a final summary, I don't think if I review products all year that anything is going to come close to how good this product is in terms of best of year product stakes. And the reason why that I have mentioned it relative to the Lumen and the Cambridge Audio is basically A, in fairness to Ever Solo because competition is good for everyone and B, if I didn't do so and you got these products side by side, you would basically suss me out just given how emphatically good this product is and how it deserves to be raved about thanks very much for watching